Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Today, we're gonna build something a little fun. I got bored one day, as often happens, and I was trying to think of a good little project involving an Arduino and some LEDs. For some weird reason, I started thinking about Knight Rider. Now, since I do not own a 1982 Pontiac Trans Am, I decided to modify the third brake light on my 2005 Ford Ranger. Now, I figured this would be a great job for an Arduino Nano. However, the Nano only has six PWM outputs, pulse width modulated outputs. Now, there are eight more digital only outputs. However, two of them are used for your serial communications bus, and I don't like to use those in case I need to monitor the serial port. And of course, D13 is shared with the onboard LED. So that leaves us with five dedicated digital output pins. However, there are also eight analog pins, six of which can be used as digital output pins. So that gives us a total of, uh, carry the one, 11. We've got a total of 11 possible digital only pins in addition to our six pulse width modulated pins. So why do I need the pulse width modulation? Well, as you can see here, if we just turn LEDs on and off, they don't fade out. The original prop used regular incandescent or possibly halogen type bulbs. So when you turn them off, they fade out gradually, giving you that nice little tracer effect. So in order to replicate this with LEDs, I need to be able to fade each LED out in steps. So in total, I have 20 steps. And as you can see on the screen here, without the pulse width modulation, the 20 steps are kind of boring actually. And it doesn't really look like the Knight Rider effect that I'm going for. However, if I fade each LED out after it's been turned on, you can see the difference. Now sped up to a little bit faster speed, it looks a lot more like the original. It looks even better better once it's inside of a brake light lens cover. I wanted to use 11 LEDs, but how do I get 11 LEDs to work with six PWM outputs? Well, five of those PWM outputs are gonna be shared between two different LEDs. The way that's accomplished is switching the negative side of the LED with one of the digital pins, while the positive side is shared with one of the PWM. As long as only one of the two negative rails is on, only that LED is going to light up according to the PWM. Now, if you want full brightness, you can light them all up, which is important for the brake light application. So back to those negative pins. In order to switch an LED on, you apply the appropriate PWM on the positive side of the LED through a 200 ohm resistor, of course, and the negative LED switches to digital low. Now to turn that LED off while that PWM turns the other one on, you set its negative pin to input. Reason being, as an input pin, it creates an extremely high resistance, which is effectively an open circuit. Now I did not film my original project. I took some pictures, but I didn't film it, and the reason was it was a lot of trial and error. I breadboarded an 8 LED version, much closer to the original, but I decided on 11 because it would really fill out the brake light a little better. So I didn't film that part, but I'm going to replicate it right now using a breadboard. Okay, right off the bat, I made a mistake programming this uh, variable voltage regulator. I got these two values reversed. The adjust pin is looking for a 1.25 volt difference from the output pin, not from ground. These two resistors need to change places. Now this is why you test your regulator circuit before you power your Arduino. This should yield 7.625 volts DC on the output. Now let's see if we are finally successful. 7.79, 7.8 close enough. We're within tolerance levels here. So we can now connect this to our Arduino supply rail. And of course it powers up and does absolutely nothing. Now we're going to speed through taking this circuit with these six resistors, these 11 LEDs and a crap ton of jumper wires and we're gonna make our kit or Cylon Knight Rider lighting effect. Before we do that let's disconnect the 12 volts. So we're gonna start by adding our LEDs and I'll do that really quickly here. Now I'm putting them all with the positive side this way and the negative side over here. Okay, now with all 11 LEDs, it's time that four of them are connected to the PWM outputs. Let's make it the other way around. So let's just go ahead and flip this around. It might make this a little easier all the way around. You'll see why in a moment because I'm going to do it where the resistors are on this side. On the first six LEDs, we're gonna put a resistor between the positive lead of the LED and the next trace on the breadboard. So, these five are now gonna connect directly to these five. This and this LED share a PWM, you see. So, 
I need five jumper wires. The color doesn't matter. I'd like the lengths to be about the same though. We're gonna jump. This one's PWM side. That's the positive side of the LED. Jump it to the positive of that one. Next, we're gonna create our LED pairs. We accomplish this by simply jumping from one LED to the next. So the positive sides, the bridge to each other. Next up, this is where it gets a little more tricky because according to the Arduino pinout here, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. We've got six PWM capable outputs. I've already mapped out which ones we're using here. We're gonna connect this resistor to number three. So that shares with this as well as this one. So the next one, we're gonna go to number five. And yeah, I'm gonna try and use the same color. Now we're gonna go ahead and connect all the PWM outputs from the Arduino to the LED pairs. Notice that the center LED is not being shared, so it has its own PWM. You are on your very own PWM. And that one is going to number 11. The next thing we need to do is connect the negative side of each LED to its respective digital out. Now the order of these is a little funny and it's only because of the way I did the actual circuit board. You can do these in any order as long as the code matches. Again, that center LED, that one goes directly to ground. Number six gets its own ground. First LED, we need analog three. And I learned the hard way that analog pins six and seven cannot be used as digital. I didn't know that at the time. That's why I have zero and one in a weird order. Now, I've already flashed the Arduino. This is programmed to where? First, it will pulse four times, then it'll go solid brake light for three seconds, and then it will start the kit effect. So let's hit the brakes. There's our brake light and Okay, and now it should start. Do I have that wrong? Okay, so it's stuck in this mode for some reason. Let's look at the code real quick. Five minutes later. And here we go. There we are. Now we have the Knight Rider effect. Let's uh, dim this light down a little bit so that you can see it in all its glory. Well, that's about it for this project. I hope you found it interesting or entertaining or useful in some way. If so, please hit that thumbs up button. If you like videos like this, hit that subscribe button down there. I've got plenty of projects coming up soon. I also do tool reviews and unboxings and things like that. Click here to check out the little song parody I did of the intro theme to Knight Rider. It's only 51 seconds long, so be sure to check that out. And up here is something else interesting that I'll decide when I upload this. Meanwhile, I'm going to go for a nice little nighttime drive.